Hello, I'm Melissa Robinson, Public Information Director for Henry County Government, and I'm here with our County Manager, Sherry Hobson Matthews. Hey Sherry, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Melissa, how are you? I'm well, and I'm so glad you have some time to sit with us because there's a lot to talk about this month in the county, and so let's just get right to it, a couple of topics, okay? Awesome, thank you. Okay, we just recently had a Board of Commissioners meeting where the the budget for the year was adopted. Can you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. Um, obviously, we were really excited to get the budget approved. Um, we had our second public hearing and our board unanimously approved our 216 point, I think about $7 million budget. Um, it definitely is an increase um, from the previous year, but as a county and we're continuing to grow, we saw some much needed um, services that we needed to enhance, but also making sure that our departments are able to work efficiently and effectively. So I was really excited about the board approving that. Um, several new positions have been approved within our judicial system, within our public safety system, and even within our technology services group, um, because we've identified some critical needs in the organization. Um, one of the other things I'm really proud about is that we were able to provide funding to our libraries to um, open or at least to have allow them an opportunity to go back to Saturday hours so I'm really looking forward to what our library services um, is going to do with the funding that we provided to them as well. That's great and I know that was something on your list for several years so and I, I think it's important for people to understand that the budget is not simply a hearing and an adoption the work starts several months before yes. and departments do their part of it, our financial services director is his right. part. So it is a big process where you're really trying to be careful about how the budget is allocated. Absolutely, and great point. We actually started the budget in December. Wow. Um, we start looking at how we're trending, we start forecasting, and we start identifying at that point what the priorities will be going into the next year. Um, we do meet with our commissioners to make sure that we are aligning our budget with what they believe to be those priorities. And so that's why this upcoming budget year, you'll see more of an emphasis in our public safety, transportation, our parks and recreation group. So we're really excited about it. A lot of work that's got to get done, but we'll definitely um, get that work done. Um, but again, a lot of it depends on our department heads and our leadership team. They really have to identify what those priorities are and really have to be able to spell out you know I'm going to be able to spend the monies um, that the board is allocating so we shall see yes no I think it's going to be great and it's an all-inclusive process absolutely, so absolutely. Um, so no that's great and I'm happy that passed and we can move on so I also want to ask you a little bit about last in April just a month ago we started our t Swass collections is yes that, right? that is so right. and that's kind of going fast right we're, we're up and Abs running yes 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 so thanks to the voters um, we were successful in having our t Swass approved um, it is a new penny that we are collecting for specifically transportation related projects um, for those that may or may not remember the county did identify about seven critical major transportation projects our board um, did previously this week or last night um, authorize our staff to to move forward with one major project, which is the widening of Jonesboro Road. But we've also brought forth to the board Bill Gartner Parkway um, design work. And so our SPWAS team is working diligently to make sure that the public recognizes that we are moving on these projects. In addition, we also have our SWAS program, so I don't want the public to be confused. We have a SWAS program and a T-SWAS program. The difference is our SWAS program not only captures transportation projects, but some of those capital improvements as well. And so we have two, two major um, projects or two major programs running simultaneously. Um, but our SWAS department is doing an amazing job. I'm sure it's very uncomfortable for our residents right now because there are a lot of projects going on. You see a lot of resurfacing, a lot of road improvements. And so we're looking to enhance your travel time. We're looking to improve your transportation improvement. So be patient with us as we work through those projects. But again, it's our citizens penny at work. And so we're really excited about what our SPLOS department is doing. Absolutely. And since you mentioned Jonesboro Road, I feel like Jonesboro Road is one of those projects that has been on the books for so yes. long. And it really is a joint project, I think. Is it a joint project with GDOT? Yes, so GDOT um, had funding in the project and one of the things that we've heard loud and clear from our board is that we've got to do a better job in moving some of these projects alone, um, which is why most of our taste loss projects have other funding sources, but we want to make sure that we're putting some um, meat in the game as well. So one of the things that um, we identified is the Jonesboro Road project. Um, when we first met with the State Department on that, we were told that it would probably be about 2030 or 2030. Wow. 32 before they could move on the project 
and we recognize that Jonesboro Road is probably one of our heartbeats or main arteries through the county with the amount of economic development that's along that corridor, with the amount of residential development, and with some of the multifamily development that's getting ready to come online, um, we recognize that we needed to do something to at least try to enhance and improve that, that corridor. So our staff um, is moving forward with that project. That's great, that's wonderful. And if you're interested in how these projects are moving forward, you can go to the county website at henrycounty-ga.com and click on the SPLOST uh, tab and there will be a whole page of website dedicated to SPLOST and T-SPLOST and, and they're updated I think pretty regularly. So if you have you want more details on that go to the the uh, the line you see at the bottom of your screen. So <laughs> yes, okay, right. there you go. Um, okay so let me move on to ARPA um, ARPA funds, which we were allocated uh, along with many other jurisdictions. Mm -hmm. And so we did, our board along with staff had a conversation at a meeting about how they want to use some of those funds. Can you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. Um, so Henry County um, was eligible to receive approximately about $45 million in American recovery um, funds as a result of the COVID pandemic. One of the things that the ARPA funds did was give us an opportunity to enhance our economic development opportunities, infrastructure and broadband, meaning any type of road projects, water and sewer projects, but also economic development and then any type of public health initiatives. Um, so we have had um, several conversations with our commissioners about, you know, what should we do with the funds and how can we put those funds back into the community? And so after much conversation, the board did agree that, you know, we definitely want to focus on what our county needs are and our governmental service needs are. So some of the projects that we've identified that we will be moving forward with is broadband. Um, that has been something that has been critical. We recognize that it was a critical need when the schools shut down and a lot of businesses shut down and everyone was home trying to get on at the same time. And so we've really put a focus there. But we've also recognized that we have our um, public health department, that they're up and running, but they also have some additional needs. And so we're going to be looking to make sure that we are able to provide resources to them. We're still navigating through the economic right. development piece, um, but we've also identified some things within our stormwater unit that we can utilize those funds for. Um, as a reminder, we did put out a survey to our residents when we received the funding. I was just going to mention that. And one of the things that they identified is making sure that we do have broadband, making sure that transportation remains a priority for the county, and then making sure that the infrastructure is in place that we need. And so a lot of what we've recommended to the board um, s centers around what we've um, taken from our residents. So we are definitely wanting to put that money back into the community. Um, and I'm sure that our financial services group is going to work diligently to make sure that we get those funds spent. Oh, definitely. And I know that that is important a lot, uh, for a lot of initiatives that the county has and it's important to you that you get stakeholder buy and that you, you give it out to the to the residents to help make those decisions because absolutely. it affects them and that's that's why we're here. Absolutely, so, absolutely. Right. And we want our citizens to get involved. Yes. Um, you know, as we're sitting here talking today, you know, if citizens have questions, we want you all to reach out. We want to be very transparent. We want to make sure that we're doing a good job. Um, and, you know, I want to take this time to thank you and your team because you all do an amazing job making sure that that information is put out. We have social media platforms. Our team is always making sure that we get the information out. So thank you, Melissa, for, for leading the charge and making sure that we have an amazing communications team that is truly communicating to our public. You know, I, I, see, I get on Instagram and I see all the posts that are going on. So we are definitely um, making sure that we're trying to keep our community involved and engaged. So thank you and your oh, team yeah. for doing that. And I love that you said it. Thank you so much for that <laughs> shout out. I have an amazing team, um, but I work with amazing people and talented people. And so we do strive to really put that information out um, and, and continue to try to do it better every time we do it. So thank you for that. That's very yes. sweet. Um, so let me move on to something that was an initiative for you that was very important and it's called the Real-Time Crime Center and it's pretty innovative so can we talk a little bit about that? Yes, yes, yes and I certainly will not take full credit for that. Our public safety team um, came to me and said, look, we got an idea. And that's typically how a lot of things start around here. We have an idea, and one of the things that we pride ourselves on is we want to be innovative. We want to be the first to do it. And so when we are looking to make sure that we create a community where you feel safe, we're always looking for resources to enhance that. Um, so our public safety um, team led by our chief, um, Chief Mark Ammerman, presented to me um, a system called FUSIS. And what our real-time crime 
Center does is it allows you as a homeowner or even a business owner to allow the county to tap into your camera system after you give us permission um, to see if there's any activities going on. The one great thing about this is that we are able to see specifically our county administration building and other administrative buildings that we have here, but we're also able to identify if there's an issue going on and we're sending our resources out where that perpetrator may be. Um, it started out small, but it has definitely expanded mm -hmm. and our special intel unit, they are doing an amazing job. Yeah. Um, I believe Detective Turner or Sergeant Turner is actually leading that group. Um, I will say this, if you are not familiar with our real-time crime center I think we'll have something on the bottom of the screen that will give you some additional information I also believe that there is a QR code that you can scan watch a video um, I do want you to know that it is not set up for us to monitor what's going on at your house again you have to give us permission but for example if you have an intruder at your home and you're not there and your alarm system is discharged if you are registered through our real-time crime center and through the FUSA system, we will be able to zoom in and, and get an idea of what's going on on your property. I've registered, there are a number of businesses that have registered, and this is definitely something that's up and coming. Again, I'm excited about us thinking outside of the box, being innovative, and making sure that we are providing um, a sense of security for our residents. So, it's, it's a, excited it's about that. It's a great that. program, and it's really impressive when you see the room. And this is, I mean, say somebody's going on vacation for an extended vacation, they can register. Absolutely. And have, if they have cameras outside, they Absolutely. can have. Absolutely. So the police would see if there was any activity and can respond immediately. Absolutely. Not wait for somebody to get home and report it. Exactly. So, so we're excited about that. No, it's really, it's a great, it's a great innovative program. And we will put a link at the bottom of the screen if you're interested in more information or you would like to register your own cameras to the system. Um, so I, before before we finish up, there's two more things. Okay. I wanted to remind people that, you know, COVID's been tough for everybody, but it's not just COVID. There's a lot of things going on, a lot of challenges, and May is mental health month, yes. right? Yes. And I know that you, as a, as a manager, tell us as uh, leaders and as staff, you know, check on, on your people. Check, make sure everybody's okay. Just ask that question. And I think you have some strong feelings about that. Absolutely. Um, mental health is something that we all face. Um, it's, you've got to have that work um, life balance. Yeah. And one of the things is that we don't want to miss those warning signs. You know, going through COVID was something that we could have never prepared for. And, you know, managing a county, leading a workforce, making those Sometimes I feel like knee jerk decisions in terms of what's going to happen. It takes a toll on you. And so we want to make sure that everyone is okay. You know, check in, call, even a simple text message. Hey, just checking in on you. But also look for those warning signs. Um, one of the things that we talk about a lot at our management level is recognizing those warning signs, but also making sure that our employees and our community know that there are resources that are available. One of the things that we also did um, within our budget is we allocated some additional funding to McIntosh Trail, which is our mental health um, agency here in the county, because we recognize that there is, there is a need. Also within our public safety team, they've recently hired a mental health coordinator okay. who will go out on calls with our officers when we feel like, hey, this may not just be a domestic call, there may be something deeper. Um, so I think mental health is something, all so May is the designated month. I see it as a 12 month pr process. We always need to check in. I'm very passionate about that and I wanna make sure that we are taking care of our, each other. Um, one of the things that I, I pride myself on and I tell our team is that we have to take time for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we have to shut off the phone, um, unplug, <laughs> recharge and, and really just find that, that, that space where we, are, we feel that we're there. But again, we've got to check in. You, yeah. It's so yeah. important to do that. So thank you for, for bringing that up. I know you've sent some correspondence yeah. out to our yes. leadership team, but to the public as well. Um, I'll ask our communications team to make sure that we do provide some links for those that may need to talk to someone or that just may need that, that support. Um, you know, as the manager, I'm smiling all the time, but there are moments that I have that I'm just <laughs> thinking, oh my goodness, what do I need to do? Um, so sometimes it's just that, you know, reaching out, talking to someone, and it's nothing to be embarrassed about. No, we no. all have our moments. So um, I definitely want to make sure that our residents recognize that resources are available. And if you don't know where those resources are, we'll definitely make sure that we provide that information. We will. We'll put a link down there. And I think, I think it was important that you said that it's important to reach out for that help. There's no stigma attached to this. 
Um, we're in a new day, and there are a lot of resources available. Absolutely. Sometimes it's just about connecting with somebody Absolutely. with a shared experience. So no, I Absolutely. think that's, if you're sick with you know, the flu, you go get medication or you get you know some things you need the same thing with mental health Absolutely. it's all the same it, it, it needs to be treated um, so that was great thank you for thank that you. and i know we have a lot of resources at a staff level you know through insurance which is Absolutely. great and i think that that's been the, the staff has really responded well to that Absolutely. So. Um, but let's let's finish about this huge initiative coming on june 4th yes. <laughs> and it's a great opportunity for everyone so tell us about the henry county career fair that's coming so i'm going to start with henry county is a great place to serve um, come, you join know, us. <laughs> come join us that's right so I, I, you know, I want to make sure that I always give a shout out to our amazing team. Our human resources team has led the charge in what I'm going to call the Disney World of Henry County <laughs> because we are going to have an epic career fair on June 4th at the Atlanta Motor Speedway from 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. in the Terra Ballroom, I believe. Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, Terra Ballroom. I got to make sure I get all my facts together. Um, but we are looking for individuals that are driven. We're looking for individuals to join our team. And it is definitely going to be a career fair. We're looking for individuals that want to have a career here with Henry County and to join our Henry County family. We will have a host of jobs from public safety to HVAC to planner jobs to builder jobs to transit drivers. And we're going to be looking to hire on the spot. We're really excited about um, filling some of the vacancies that we have here. But we also recognize that we have to remain competitive. And so I want to take this time to thank our board for approving an increase for our staff earlier this year um, so that we could at least get our, our salaries up to where we can remain competitive. But I also want to let people know that Henry County is definitely a great place to serve. There's so many opportunities for you to grow in this organization. There's so much to offer and we are truly a family here. Um, we've worked together Melissa and I have worked together for a long time, and we have each watched each other grow within this organization. So if you're looking for an opportunity to grow, if you're looking for an opportunity to join an amazing family, and if you want to start your career or finish your career right. with Henry County, um, come join us. So um, I'm really excited about that. And again, I want to thank our HR team for pulling this together. Um, if you don't have the information, I think Melissa is going to share our website you. so you can look for that information. But then also invite your friends and family. So um, looking forward to it on June 4th at the Atlanta Motor Speedway. Absolutely, yes. So you'll go to henryjobs.com and that will, we'll put the link on the bottom of the screen. And, and I think an uh, important point, if you want a part-time job, we have part-time jobs. If you yes. want a uh, regular full-time job we've got that if you want a career path there are plenty of career paths absolutely so i mean everything from you know um a part-time transit driver to a full-time engineer i think that's we've got right it all. So, absolutely yeah so no i think uh hopefully tell your friends tell your family if you're looking for something new henry henryjobs.com and it's on june 4th june 4th land motor speedway land motor speedway and come prepared to interview if that's what you want to do that's so, right yeah we're excited so there's there's so much going on there's so yes much. a lot going on it's exciting so thank you for giving us this update absolutely. and i look forward to doing this every month with you and we can absolutely. just let people know what's going on absolutely because i don't think anybody has as much knowledge as you do <laughs> when it comes to all this i don't know how you keep it all but yeah no so this is this is great and we appreciate you watching um, and again, you can contact us anytime, go to our website, Absolutely. check out our Facebook, Instagram, and thank you so much. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you, Melissa. And I appreciate you, and I appreciate you for watching. So thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.